Welcome to our techies. I am Pankaj Rai and in this video I am going to talk about preferences data store. In this video you will see about what it is, when to use it and it is the replacement for what. But before that if you haven't subscribed to this channel then do hit the subscribe button because on this channel you will get the tutorials on Android, Kotlin and Firebase topics. So now let's get started with preferences data store. Before I proceed towards the coding part of it, let me tell about what it is. So being an Android developer, you might have used shared preferences. It's one of the common way to store data in the local memory and it's based on a key value pair. Preferences data store is a replacement for the existing shared preferences. And it also offers you a capability to migrate from old shared preferences to this new preferences data store. But the major thing is it's widely used and it's most common way to store then what is need for preferences data store. So the need is the limitations that is with the shared preferences. Those limitations are like calling on a main thread. One thing is shared preferences should also get called from the background thread. And this has to be taken care by the developers. But with preferences data store, this is automatically taken care. You might be calling either from background thread or foreground thread. It really doesn't matter because under the hood, before saving the data, it will switch to the background thread. Another important factor is about signaling errors. Say that if you want to store any data and you might have got some file exception, the IO exception, then shared preference doesn't throw this exception. You'll not get this information that there was some I exception. But now with preferences data store, now you can catch those things and return an empty preferences. Also, the transaction APIs with strong consistency guaranteed is available with preferences data store, which was not available with shared preferences. Now let's see about how to use it. So unlike the traditional shared preference where we have preference manager dot get instance or default shared preferences here it's a bit different and it depends on the flow mechanism so the first thing is you have to call this method create data store you can see this it's an extension function over context which needs name then corruption handler migration or the scope you can specify all those things the default one is the background thread, IO thread. So the normal way is just call this method and give the name. This is same as when you call the shared preference, you give the name for it. Same like here also. You call create data store, provide the name. And now this object is important for us because we are going to take this object and edit the content. Edit means to store the content. So if I want to store any information based on the key value pair on this object, I have to call edit and this gives us the mutable preferences. This is the key and this is the value. But the key is not the traditional string here. How to create the string? Let's see about this. So the keys has to be created in this way. Here you call this preferences key, the type and the key. That's it. So next time onward, when you want to read or write, you just have to call this username. That's it. So here I'm using the same username, which is of type string. It's preferences key of type string username. And in that, I'm going to store the value. So this part is for storing the content using the preferences data store. Straightforward. Now, how to read? Well, to read from it, there is a bit more process than the traditional shared preferences. That is, the first one is to call a map operator. Because this is going to return the flow. So what it is on the same data store object which you have created here 
earlier it was added for safe and to read need to have a data object and on that you can directly call map and whatever you want to return you can specify it here as the last line of the map so by this way it says that if it is null then return not found value if you want to return null you can just completely avoid writing this but i do not want to have this as a nullable type so i have given this value either if it is having a value then give the value otherwise give the default value as not found and one of the thing that is offered through the preference data store is runtime exception so it can signal those things like the file i exception now to catch those things you just need to call the catch operator here and inside this in case of any runtime exception it will come to this place if it's an io exception then just emit the empty preferences and if it is apart from i exception then better to throw it so this is about just giving the flow of whatever type it is either string or boolean or data type whatever you are having you have to specify it that and that's it the next part is actually to read from this flow so this is emitting the value and this emitted value has to be collected somewhere else and that we are doing it here this is nothing but this function which is returning the flow of string on that flow of string can call dot collect and inside that it will return you this value either this if it's not null or this if it is null the one thing here is collect is a suspending function which means that this has to be called either from the suspending function or from a coroutine builder and that's why you are use, seeing that i'm using launch here to call this dot collect but one thing is like collect is not a life cycle aware component it doesn't understand about the life cycle in those scenario which is very straightforward you could use collect but if there is any such need where you want to make it life cycle aware then rather than calling dot collect you could say on this function as live data and observe the value so this is a functionality offered by flow where you could either collect the value or you can just call dot as live data and that will convert this live data so by this way you can read the value or write the value so that's it in this video if you have liked this video then do not forget to hit the like button and share it with your friends also if you haven't subscribed this channel then do hit the subscribe button so that you will get the notification for the upcoming tutorials on android kotlin and firebase thank you and stay tuned